On this episode of China Uncensored, one of the worst intelligence breaches in decades, and it happened in China. Hi, welcome to China Uncensored. I'm your host, Chris Chappell. U.S. spy operations in China have been crippled, according to this recent report by the New York Times. 18 to 20 CIA secret agents and sources operating inside of China were either killed or imprisoned between 2010 and 2012, sometimes in a rather extravagant fashion. One was even, we're told, shot in a sort of courtyard of a government building in front of his colleagues as a sort of message to, uh, for those who might be thinking about spying for the CIA. Which does fall in line with the Chinese idiom, killing a chicken to scare the monkeys. Because, man, scaring monkeys is great. Now, this story comes to us courtesy of my two favorite words in journalism. No, not lunch provided. The other two, anonymous sources. The New York Times talked to 10 current and former American officials who described the intelligence breach as one of the worst in decades. And the worst part of it is, no one knows how it happened. According to the unnamed sources, no one can figure out whether it was a mole, a hack that uncovered how the CIA communicated with its operatives, or even if it was some kind of bizarre turf war within the CIA. Okay, so shooting informants in a courtyard, an unknown mole, a turf war in the CIA? This is totally going to be made into a based on a true story Hollywood movie, isn't it? But to give you an idea of how bad the breach was, the CIA and FBI actually worked together to figure out what happened. That joint operation was called Honey Badger, presumably because, okay, I'm not sure. But a Honey Badger can definitely kill a chicken, and monkeys, and anything else that stumbles across its path. But this Honey Badger did not succeed. There was one possible mole they investigated, a former CIA operative who now lives in another Asian country, but there wasn't enough evidence to arrest him. Okay, so the movie is going to be called Operation Honey Badger. But like that terrible Red Dawn remake, they're going to move the action from China to North Korea because, you know, they want to be able to get their movies shown to that huge Chinese movie market. The CIA and FBI declined to make any comment about the actual story, not the potential based on a true story that I'm sure is being optioned in Hollywood as I speak. And China is also playing it cool. I am unaware of the specific situation regarding the New York Times report that you refer to. And then there's my favorite state-run media, the Global Times. They wrote, we're not saying we did it, but if we did do it, we're awesome. Okay, I'm just paraphrasing, but you get the idea. Although for some reason, the Global Times wants to make it very clear that the part about shooting someone in a courtyard was definitely and totally purely fabricated. The article also compares the New York Times article to a Mission Impossible movie saying, and this is an actual quote, the journalist who wrote the report must have been deeply addicted to the franchise. Okay, okay, so the movie is going to be called Mission Impossible Operation Honey Badger, and Tom Cruise will be doing all of his own stunts, including single-handedly disarming the North Korean nuclear weapons program. Anyway, this story breaks as U.S.-China relations are actually doing okay-ish. And with no way to know who actually leaked the story or how long the New York Times has been working on it, it's hard to verify what motives might be behind it. It's definitely embarrassing for the CIA and the U.S. government and could strain ties between the United States and China during a sensitive period. And right after President Trump and Chinese leader Xi Jinping became such good friends, too. Anything that could drive a wedge between Trump and Chinese leader Xi Jinping would be a boon to Xi's political rivals. That loose faction under a former Chinese leader and creator of the world's most annoying ringtone, Jiang Zemin. The New York Times has been utilized as a tool in this political battle before. In 2012, just as the dominoes started falling that would take out these two major players in the Jiang faction, the New York Times releases this expose detailing the massive family fortune of one of the guys behind bringing them down. But on the other hand, this spy thing is an old story. It happened way before either Trump or Xi were in power. So it's hard to say how much political fallout this would cause to either leader. 
One thing that is interesting about this story is that it shows the CIA may have been losing informants at a critical time during the Chinese Communist Party's internal power struggles. 2012 was the year when Xi Jinping took over the Communist Party. It was eventful. A corrupt police chief fled to the U.S. consulate disguised as an old lady to rat out his boss who was going to kill him. Said boss and his boss allegedly tried to pull off a coup to grab power from Xi Jinping, failed, and ended up in prison for murder and corruption. And that set off Xi's power struggle against Jiang that's still going on. And the whole time this was happening, the U.S. government was possibly even more in the dark than usual. It's like you've been watching your favorite soap opera, General Hostility, for years, and the storylines are getting really exciting. And then the day you're finally going to find out who's the shadowy figure behind it all, the cable cuts out. And by the time you finally get it fixed, the storylines are completely different and you have no idea what's happening anymore. Anyway, despite the Chinese Communist Party's apparent success at killing foreign spies between 2010 and 2012, they seem to be struggling in recent years. According to the New York Times article, the CIA has been rebuilding its spy network inside China, and agents and informants have not all been turning up dead. Which might explain why the Chinese authorities have lately been relying on tactics like creating a hotline people can call if they think someone is a spy. Or creating a helpful list for the general public of spy characteristics to keep an eye out for. With such gems as people who like to throw out controversial subjects at public gatherings in order to ignite debate and then quietly observe, and people who often throw out reactionary remarks and exaggerate the merits of foreigners. Yes, those are definitely spies. Or internet trolls. And then, of course, there was this friendly comic put up everywhere for National Security Education Day called Dangerous Love. It's an actual comic meant to warn hapless Chinese women about the dangers of dating foreigners because they're probably spies and you'll end up in jail for helping them. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that these probably aren't the same crack techniques that they used back in 2010 through 2012. So what do you think about the deaths of CIA informants in China? Leave your comments below. And don't worry, no chickens or monkeys were hurt in the filming of this episode. <laughs> No monkeys, at least.